Now, let's move on to number 11. The question is, a transmitter and a receiver is 45 kilometers apart. Suppose that there's an obstacle midway the, the, between the transmitter and the receiver. By how much must the path between the towers clear the obstacle in order to avoid the fraction at a frequency of 11 gigahertz? So, madali lang yung tanong, no? Ang gagamitin lang natin dito is the Fresnel concept or the Fresnel radius. But in this case, we're going to uh, use the Fresnel clearance. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi rito, clear the obstacle. Okay, so we are, we are talking about the Fresnel clearance. Now, paano ba sinasolve yung Fresnel clearance? Or the, the, Fresnel, uh, the Fresnel radius muna and then the Fresnel clearance. So let us say, sabi dito sa problem, Meron daw tayong transmitter, ito yung transmitter natin, and say this is our receiver, okay? And this is our ground. And ngayon, um, 45 kilometers daw ito. 45 kilometers apart from each other, okay? And, okay, so 45 kilometers apart, may obstacle midway. So let us say nandito yung obstacle, okay? And... So, ang tanong niya, uh, gaano raw kalaki yung clearance mo if we're going to beam out from the transmitter to receiver? Gaano raw kalaki yung clearance natin doon sa obstacle? Yan yung tinatanong natin. O yan yung tinatanong sa atin. Okay? So, yan yung isosolve natin ngayon. Now, we are given also the the frequency, the operating frequency of 11 gigahertz. So, how do we compute for the Fresnel clearance? Okay. Actually, the derecho hina natin ito, no? We were not, any, we will not anymore solve for the Fresnel radius, but directly on the Fresnel clearance. And the equation will be, uh, ano ba equation natin? That will be 10.4 square root of D1, D2, FD. Okay? So, ano ba yung D1? Ano ba yung D2? Ang sabi kasi, yung, yung obstacle is what? The obstacle is halfway. So, kalahati ng 45 kilometers. And that is 22.5 kilometers. That will be our D1. And then, for D2, that will also be 22.5 kilometers also. So, that's, that is our D2. So, D1 and D2 is 22.5. D, of course, is uh, the, whole, uh, the whole distance, which is 45 kilometers. And F is 11 gigahertz. Now, take note. Whenever we substitute those values, hindi na natin ilalagay yung mga units niya. No? Just like this. No? Ito kasi yung magiging substitution niya. Yan. So, kung mapapansin natin dito, that uh, 22.5 doesn't have the kilometers anymore. 22.5. And then 11 doesn't have the gigahertz. And the 45 doesn't have the kilometers. It's all in the equation. Okay? So, what will be the answer for, for uh, this problem? The answer will be 10.5 uh, meters. Okay, and that is of course la letter B. Okay, dali lang, di ba? Walang kahirap-hirap. That's number 11. Now, we move to number 12. Ano sabi sa number 12? Ground effects refers to the effects on the antenna's radiation pattern caused by what? So, ang, ang, ang ground kasi meron talaga siyang effect on uh, the antenna. Okay, and usually nagkakaroon ng ground effects on horizontal antennas while in vertical antennas, it will serve as a mirror, a mirror image. Okay, but for, for uh, horizontal antennas, it will depend on how high is the antenna from the ground. Okay, kasi pagka vertical, halimbawa, ito yung ating antenna, and usually, ang, ver ang vertical antenna is quarter wavelength. And because of the ground, dahil doon sa ground natin, nakakaroon siya ng mirror image. 
making another quarter, making this antenna the full half wave. Okay, so ito ay buong half wave na. Okay, so for, for vertical antennas, this is very good. But for horizontal, medyo may problema tayo ng konti rito dahil pagka horizontal yung antenna natin and whenever they radiate, nagra-radiate ito in all directions, of course, nakakaroon ito ng reflection on the ground. Okay? So, yung reflection ng ground may be good, may be not, but it will depend on the height of the vertical antenna from the ground. Mas mataas yung height ng horizontal antenna mo, yung vertical height niya, mas mataas yun, mas okay. Ibig sabihin, makukuha mo talaga yung figure of a 8 na radiation pattern for the halfway dipole. But if not, it will have an effect on the uh, antenna. Okay? So, ano yung nagiging Ano yung cause nung ground effect? Nai-discuss ko na. No? Nai-discuss ko na siya. So, obviously, the answer will be letter A. The radio signals reflecting off the ground. So, that is for number number 12. Okay, letter A. Kuha niyo ba yan? Question number 13. In telephony, call blocking is? Ito yung mga, mga uh, choices. Letter A, cannot occur in a public telephone network. Yes, it may occur in in public telephone network. And letter B, occurs in a local loop when there is an electrical power failure. Uh, hindi siya nangyayari kapag ka may power failure on local loop because power is on the central office, not anymore in the local loop. Letter C, occurs only on long-distance cables. Well, it also occurs in local loops. And letter D occurs when central office capacity is exceeded. Well, obviously, alam na natin yung sagot, no? Kasi uh, yung A, B, and C is not the correct answer. So, therefore, letter D is correct. Whenever we say call blocking, ang call blocking kasi, kapag ka yung tawag mo ay hindi makakarating doon sa cold party, doon sa destination, hindi siya makakarating for whatever reason, Ang tawag natin doon, call blocking. At bibigyan ka niya ng busy tone. Actually, merong dalawang pwedeng maging cause ng uh, call blocking. Pwedeng yung telepono, yung destination, yung called party is uh, off-hook. Meaning, ginagamit siya. Kaya bibigyan ka niya ng busy tone. So, it can be cause of call blocking. Another one is this, yung answer natin kanina. That is letter D, occurs when the central office capacity is exceeded. Kapag ka wala ng circuit na pwede para uh, tawiran ng ating uh, call. Okay, so the answer for this question is letter letter D. Okay, let's move on to number 14. Placing a metallic array on the antenna, antenna effects to increase the current at the base of the antenna. And also to make the current distribution more uniform, what is this called? Ano daw ang tawag natin dito? The answer for this is letter C, top loading. Ano bang ginagawa ng top loading? We have several types of loading. Yung isa ay uh, whenever we use that in the base. Tawag natin dito is the base loading. Meron naman kapag nasa center, ang tawag natin ay center loading. Pero pagka nasa top, kaya katulad yan, nasa top kayo. Kaya ilo-load namin kayo. Ang corny ng choco. No? Anyway, <laughs> yan. Meron kang parang wheel no? or spoke at the top of your antenna. Ang tawag natin dito is top loading. Anong trabaho ng top loading? Ang trabaho niya is to make the capacitance of the antenna uh, less. Meaning, making this antenna a resonant antenna. At kapag ka resonant antenna siya, ganito kasi yan eh. Kapag yung antenna mo, alam meron tayong antenna. Di ba? Alam naman natin antenna, if this is a quarter wavelength, meron tayong standing wave, both voltage and current. Pagka quarter wave, ano yung current mo 
uh, current standing wave mo at the end of the antenna, na quarter wavelength antenna. Basically, that is minimal, meaning uh, mababa yung current uh, standing wave mo rito. Pero pagdating natin doon sa pinaka-base niya, maximum naman siya. Okay? And maximum siya. Okay? Pagdating doon sa uh, sa base. Okay, ngayon. Kapag ka, nagkaroon tayo ng top loading, basically, yung yung minima yung um, uh, yung current standing wave mo na minima ay lagpas doon sa pinaka pinaka dulo niya no nandito siya magsisimula that's your minima and then this will be your maxima so yung standing wave mo na minima ay nadagdagan ng distance yan yan yung trabaho ng top loading. Ang trabaho niya is to increase the electrical length of the antenna. Kasi minsan, yung quarter wavelength mo, say for example, if you have 1 megahertz, sabihin na natin, ha, 1 megahertz na frequency, okay? Ano yung wavelength natin? Ang wavelength natin will become around 300 uh, meters. Tama? Pagkahinati ko to sa apat, ilan ito? Divided by 4. This will be equal to uh, what? <laughs> This will be equal to 75 meters. Tama ba? Okay. Mataas ito. Napakataas niyan. Eh, imagine niyo that is 1 megahertz. What if this is 1 kilohertz? This will become 750 meters. Tama? Magiging 750 yan. At yan, hindi na yan masyadong practical. So, anong gina... <laughs> anong ginagawa pag para yung maging practical yung height natin instead of uh, making it very high ang ginagawa natin is we use the top loading to make its length um, higher okay or longer okay so yun yung trabaho ng uh, ng top loading So the answer for this question is letter C. Okay? Okay, next number. Okay, let's move on to to question number 15. What is the letter number designation for a carrier N1 sideband? Okay, so we're given uh, the choices letter A, J3E, B is H3E, C is A3E, and D is F3E. Okay, so alin dito yung may letter number designation? Take note, one carrier. Ibig sabihin, nandun pa yung carrier niya. At isa lang yung sideband. Okay, so isa-isa natin ito. Yung letter D definitely is uh, not one carrier and one sideband because F is actually FM, frequency modulation ito. And buo ito, syempre, hindi mo pwedeng hatiin yan. So, double sideband yan. Hindi nga actually double yan. Napakaraming sidebands yan. Okay, so letter D is not correct. Hindi yan tama. A3E is double sideband full carrier. Double sideband full carrier. Okay. And then, J3E is single sideband. Yan. Single sideband yan. Yan nga lang suppressed yung carrier natin. So, mer wala siyang carrier na suppressed, pero isa lang yung sideband niya. So, the correct answer is letter letter B, obviously. And um, uh, H3E. Ano ba yung H3E? H3E is double sideband full carrier. Okay? To have an additional information about uh, this, This is what we call the ITU radio emission. And uh, ang, ang designation nito is B, 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 B. Tandaan nyo po ito ha. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Itong B is the bandwidth of the emission. This is the bandwidth. Okay. And yung 1, 2, 3, and 4 is actually details about the radio emission. For example, yung 1... This is the nature of the modulation of the main carrier. Yung 2 naman ay the type of the modulating signal. 
And yung tree naman ay the information, the type of information that is transmitted. Then you have the 4, which is the details, and yung 5 is the multiplexing. So, kung ang titignan mo lang talaga dito, yung una, yung number 1, no? and that is, say, for example, this uh, A3E, ito yung 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Tapos yung 4 and 5 is actually optional. Optional ito. So, hindi natin ito masyadong ginagamit. Uh, so, A, ibig sabihin, double sideband suppress, ah, double sideband full carrier. Yung F is FM. Yung J is single sideband suppressed carrier. And H is single sideband full carrier. How about yung 3? Yung 3 is the type of the modulating signal. This is one channel, 3 means one channel containing analog information while e is used in telephony or oral mono oral broadcasting okay so ito yung tatandaan natin no? now i have a, I, I have a full video on this on how to how to use this no? pero hindi ko na madidiscuss buo sa inyo to ngayon dahil medyo mahaba yung discussion diyan Okay, so that is question number uh, 15.